Welcome to The Point. I'm your host, Anna Kasparian, and we are actually broadcasting out of Studio B at TYT Network, Rebel Headquarters. What the hell is that? Well, we are currently under construction, so what you're seeing right now is not the permanent set of The Point. It's a little different, but it still looks kind of similar to how we've uh, broadcasted before. We have a great show for you guys today, and I'm really excited to announce that we have a new producer for the show replacing David Janet. Her name is Jennifer Rufer, and she was actually one of my students at Cal State University Northridge. Oh. A star student of mine. How exciting. She got A's? She got an A. She got an A. She got an A. Okay, I don't yeah. know if I'm supposed yeah. to legally disclose that information, but nonetheless. <laughs> Nepotism Hollywood people. She, she's yeah. great, and I'm really looking forward to not only working with her, but making the show even better than it already is. Now, what are we talking about on The Point today? Lots of fun stories, including a 12-year-old who got detained for trying to kill her own mother. You won't believe why she tried to do that. Also, 24 people prove what it's like to be an elderly person with a tattoo. Also, how do you raise awareness about something as uncomfortable as rectal cancer? We'll tell you what Chicago's doing about it. And also, Megan Trainer is all about that base, and according to some, all about that sexism too. We'll tell you why people are criticizing her and her latest music video. But before we get to that, you want to meet our panelists, right? And they're reoccurring panelists. They're awesome. Hank Chen, he's a comedian and actor. He's currently on Community, uh, which is online. 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 It's online. <laughs> so if you want to check it out, make sure you do. Can we get a shot of Hank Chen, On the please? On the British Yahoo. Yeah. Right, online, <laughs> yes, right. exactly. Um, he's also in upcoming episodes of Rizzoli and Isles, Isles and also Baby Daddy. Yeah. Baby dad. Sweet. Thank you. Anna, this is so nice. You didn't have to renovate just for me, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Only the best for you. <laughs> Please, thank we, you. We also have Robbie Motz on the show today. He's the host of Equals 3 on YouTube, and every time we have him on, uh, people freak out. So, in a oh, good way. Oh, cool. In a good Great. way. People like yeah. you, Robbie. Well, you didn't have to renovate for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All righty. Stole your joke. <laughs> so, let's get started with uh, our very first topic, a 12-year-old getting arrested. A 12-year-old girl in Boulder, Colorado recently got arrested because she attempted to poison her mother on two different occasions. Now, according to reports, she initially tried to poison her by putting bleach in her smoothie. The mother apparently drank the smoothie and noticed that there was something different about it. Um, in fact, she said that she thought, well, maybe my girl or my daughter just didn't wash the cup appropriately and there's a little bit of bleach, not a big deal. Second time, the girl actually put bleach into the pitcher of water that her mother drinks from. So what gives? Why would a 12-year-old girl try to poison her own mother? Well, it turns out that her mom tried to discipline her by taking her iPhone away, and this was her way of retaliating against her. Now, the girl is going to face, or is facing, two counts of attempted first-degree murder. So she's going to deal with some serious consequences. According to uh, police officials, she had, quote, pre-planned this a couple of different times. I want to know what you guys think about this. Robbie, let me start with you. Make your point. Wow, okay, she's 12, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, okay, a couple of things. One, um, attempted first degree murder when you're 12, like that's, that's almost like impressive. Um, like that's like, that's like, wow, you're gonna live that's with that. admirable. Like, no. Admirable. <laughs> but I mean like, you will never have to intimidate anyone ever again. I'll be like, I tried to kill my mom when I was 12. Like you will always be able to have that under your belt. But like, not, yeah, not, I'm not saying this is a good thing. Of course. But um, second thing, why do 12 year olds have iPhones? Why do they need iPhones? Yes, like, thank you. you. Know, I'm gonna thank sound like you. such an old yes. person right now, but like, yes. wh like, what do you possibly need to do as a 12 right. year old? You need to like call your friends and make a point. No, your mom's doing that for you. So right? Hank is itching to make his point. I'm very curious. You seem to be agreeing with Robbie here. That's the point. I was like, she deserves a beat down for trying to poison her mother, and the mother deserves a beat down for giving her an iPhone. I mean, I think this is a very classic case of spoiling a child. I mean, I think a lot, the mother has just as much to blame because a 12 year old? You know, I where, know. Where, where does she get the, get the sense of entitlement? There I, are yeah. some reasons or good reasons why parents would want to give their kid a phone. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a smartphone. I think giving a, a, a teenager or a prepubescent individual a mm -hmm. phone for emergency reasons makes sense. But in this case, I mean, I think we rely way too much on giving kids technology to distract them and a lot of parents do it because they don't want a parent. It's an easy way yeah. to give a kid an iPhone or an iPad and not have to deal with, you know, having to actually interact with them. And I understand why that happens. People are busy, life is tough, parenting is difficult. But nonetheless, in this case, I mean, the idea of a 12-year-old thinking that it's okay to kill her own mother 
over this technology is absolutely ludicrous and it shows you just how addicted a lot of us are to this type of technology. Now here's a personal question that I have for this story. How will you discipline your kids differently from how you were disciplined? I'm gonna start off with you, Hank. Yeah, well first of all, I was gonna say my kids are gonna get a flip phone from Boost Mobile or Metro PCS. <laughs> that's 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 Perfect. all they need, okay? And then like the second thing is, you know, my, my kids, uh, similar to the way that my parents brought me up, they will be threatened by violence because they just have to have that hanging over yes. their head. Because if it's, if it's not there, if there isn't the possibility that they're going to get a beat down, yeah. they're going to be bad. Um, I'm not saying that I might follow through every single time, but it has to be there. You know, the way that I would um, temper the discipline that my parents enacted on me is I would make sure that A, everything they got they deserved, <laughs> and B, they would know that ultimately they, they, they were loved. And there isn't like this, uh, and they would be rewarded for doing the good things too. I mean, the one thing that sticks out for me is when I was in school, you know, like my classmates would be like, oh my God, I got a B, my dad's gonna buy me the VHS Free Willy, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna get a lecture about how, how I'm ashamed of the dynasty for getting a B. So there was <laughs> definitely disconnect, That's, I cultural can disconnect. I totally, <laughs> totally relate to you <laughs> yes. in that regard because of my Armenian yes, upbringing. That's right. Robbie, what about you? Uh, first of all, I just I, <laughs> the violence thing I think is really funny. Yeah, I just maybe hang a sword <laughs> above my kid's bed, like a Damocles sword, and just like it's just so you know. But carrot um, or stick? That's the carrot real question. Carrot or stick? Yeah. Carrot or stick? Uh, my parents actually, I think, did a really good job disciplining me. They weren't too harsh. They weren't too soft. I think they they were very reasonable. Um, and that's kind of why, like, I would just want to have more fun than they did disciplining my kid. I would want to, like, <laughs> screw with my kid a little bit, uh -huh. like, and like, and in a really theatrical way. So, like, say, like, they're stealing a cookie out of the out of the cookie jar. If we still have cookie jars, then you know, I would want the kid to kind of like reach in, and then for my voice to project out of a recording, just be like, "Step away from the cookie!" And it would like scream at my kid. Um, so you want to be a fun parent. Yeah, I want to be a fun parent. And live stream. I want to give my kid live, lots live of stories yeah. and mm -hmm. slight trauma, and they'll be a great comedian one day. Yeah, I. You know, it's funny because I'm thinking about the way that my mom raised me, and like my dad disciplined me sort of, but it was really my mom that did the bulk of the work, and she was tough. I mean, I've talked about her quite a bit on the point, and I want to be just like her because she <laughs> used she used the same tactics that you just mentioned right now. Like right. my mom was not afraid to use corporal punishment. Right. Now she did it in a responsible way. She didn't beat me down, <laughs> right? But I I did grow up fearing her, and I think that that fear kind of led me on the straight and narrow. But another thing that I plan on doing differently is look, I grew up with modest means. Like my family was working class, and they eventually worked their way up to solid middle class. And so I, I know that I'm likely to be in the middle class and I can afford nice things for my kids when I have them, but I'm going to go out of my way to make them think that they're poor. That way they'll have the same work ethic that I did when I was growing up. So that's the plan. What, Lexus? What are you talking about? I, know. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, but I want to know what you guys think. How do you plan on raising your children differently from the way you were raised or disciplining them differently from how you were disciplined? We want to hear from you, so comment in the section below and we'll see you soon. All right, so BuzzFeed asked one of the most important questions imaginable. What if I get a tattoo and then it doesn't look so good 40 years down the line? Well, they actually found individuals who got tattoos when they were younger and then decades later, their tattoos still kind of look badass, according to BuzzFeed, but I want to know what you guys think about it. So let's do it. Let's put up some of these pictures. Some of these people are in their 60s, some are older. So there's a gentleman there. Uh, of course, there's a younger picture of him and then an older picture of him. All right. I, you know, <laughs> the only thing about this that makes me uncomfortable are, are the nipple rings. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Right? Everything else seems fine. Look like Moving door on. knockers. I mean, this grandma is kind of badass. So badass. <laughs> I like that she stretched her ear. She's wearing, wait, can we go back to that? I love that she's wearing like this lovely little floral shirt, like right. floral <laughs> button down shirt, and then she's got the tattoos going on. It's the Martha Stewart collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would yeah. be hilarious. Okay, can I just say something about this guy? Um, he can get it. He's hot. He can He's get hot. It. Yeah. Yeah. Get it, girl. Right. All right. Wow, now he looks like he's actually wearing clothes and that's the no, genius no. of this tattoo. Can you imagine how many days it took just to get all those tattoos, if not like a month straight? Years, yeah, because yeah, you have to start small <laughs> and then kind of build on that right. forever. Now is that, that's a tramp stamp. Yeah, that's just ironic. That's, yeah. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> That's just ironic. Yeah, so, you know, All yeah. right, so you guys have seen the pictures. Now I'm going to give you a chance to make a concise point about this. Hank Chen, make your point. I, I love them. I think they're mm. badass. I think it's great. I think I think what, you know, the piercings are kind of making, like, you know, do your ears hang low, and do, your, do they wobble to and fro? That kind of, <laughs> it, that's what makes, do your parts hang low? Because when you get older, things yeah. just start to go south. They and do? With, with, you know, you don't need help with additional metal pulling it down. That's the only thing I would be cautious of. And I was going to say, any of these women, if they told me to watch my mouth, young man, or to pick up that piece of trash, I'd do it. I really would. I yeah. would be intimidated by yeah, them, to say very the much least. So. Robbie, what about you? Uh, yeah, I think they're wearing it really well. I think they it still looks really uh, good on them. But like the one thing I can't help but think is, when you got that tattoo, weren't you like a completely different person yeah. back then? Mm -hmm. Like, And these tattoos, are you still really, your entire life, really? You still want that dragon like around <laughs> your chest, are you sure? And But like the thing that I love is watching these pictures, Every old person, like if they had the fruit covered in tattoos, they're like, like they're you know, they're owning, like, it. They're, owning yes. it. They're like, I still am this person. Right. And I'm like, well, then good for you. Then you made a good choice by getting that tattoo. I think the confidence <laughs> makes all the difference because, first of all, I, I would never get a tattoo because I'm just not into tattoos. It's not my thing. I'm not really feeling it. But I feel like. If I were to get one at 18, that was when I was still going through my Cholita phase. <laughs> so I would have like 818 or something stupid. That's like the city that I grew up in, right? Like yeah. I'd have a ridiculous tattoo and I would probably regret it. But another thing that I want to say is the best thing you can do, even if you're a little insecure about something, is just own it, right? You got a haircut that you're not too crazy about, doesn't matter, own it. Because when you're confident about it and you act like you love it, other people are going to be like, huh? I like it too, for the most part. Right. Right? So anyway, here's the question for the story. Would you rather, oh, here's the question for the story. Uh, how do you modify your body and appearance to express yourself? Hank. You're saying an additional to like piercings or tattoos? Anything. Right. Anything. Any way that you modify the way you look um, to well, well, express yourself. Okay, well you know what? I didn't know how to dress until I, I think in college. So because I was always a slender guy, uh -huh. you try to overcompensate by getting like the large or the extra large, and then you just look like a gangster, uh -huh. and like not in a good way. And so I didn't know to buy clothes that fit me mm. uh, and, and make you look like, there you go, skinny yeah. boys unite, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, to, you know, to, to make sure that everything sort of, that, that, you, that you look good, that you photograph well and, and now you know, being in front of the camera is kind of my job. I know how to present myself. But I was gonna say about the tattoos thing, I have two tattoos and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And a friend of mine who kind of went crazy with tattoos, just like these senior citizens did, told me, well, you know, if if it was something that you wanted at the time, then, then you know, what's to really regret? Right, so, it represents a hmm. part of you yeah. that existed at one point. A history. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, it's like yeah. rings on a tree, I guess. Right? Huh. Yeah, Robbie, what about that's you? So, for me, I like do not want people to know. Like, I just like I will tell you uh, things about me when I want to tell you those things. Mm -hmm. So like, I wouldn't want to wear those things on my body. I wouldn't want to, like a slogan or a saying. I'm like, you know what? You'll get to know me. You what do you What do me, you know? want people to know, though? How do you express yourself? So I think the yeah the only things is like you know like how I dress is yeah. obviously a reflection of who I am. I'll often wear like funny shirts and things yeah. like that. I I am almost always casual and I don't take. Uh, a lot of time prepping myself. And I kind of do want people to know that. I kind of want people to know, like... You're that, laid back. That, yeah, exactly. And that's that's how I present myself to yeah. people. Uh, but as far as, like, a, a tattoo or a piercing or, like, huge expression out to the world, I'm not really big on that, actually. So I, I am, but I, I don't think I do anything crazy. But when you really... Look, for women, it's a little different, right? I modified my nose because I didn't like my nose. Um, it looks so, great. At, well, thank you. And at some point, I'll modify other things as they will sag and be in places that I don't want them to be. I put makeup on. That's a way of expressing myself and modifying myself. But in terms of tattoos and piercings, the only like irreverent thing I did was a belly button ring, which I recently took out. I got it when I was 19. I'm 28 now, so I would have had it for 10 years which is kind of crazy. And um, my boyfriend was like, I think I think it's time. I think it's time to get rid of the navel ring. I don't think I'm too old for it, but I want to know what you guys think. Comment in the section below. Tell us how you modify yourself to express yourself, and we will see you guys soon. Meredith's Miracles is an organization that's trying to raise awareness about something that you don't hear too much about, rectal and colon cancer. Now, how do you raise awareness about this and grab people's attention? How do you captivate them? Well, they have a cheeky 
way of doing so. Let's take a look at some of these pictures. So in honor of Colon Cancer Awareness Month, the advertisement by Mer Meredith's Miracles aims to raise awareness about colon cancer by placing pictures of butt cracks on the seats of Chicago City buses. All right, and uh, right underneath uh, the bold print, there's fine print that says the following. <laughs> no one wants to see this except your doctor. Colon cancer is the second most deadly cancer, but detected early, it's also one of the most treatable. That's something I didn't know about. So uh, I'm glad that they're finding a clever and fun way to do this, but I want to know if you guys agree. Robbie, make your point. Yeah, I'm digging it. I think anytime you can raise awareness about something good with humor um, and, and shock value, sure, I think that's great. Um, I do think though, there's like there's gonna be that certain point when people have seen this on the bus like way too long, and they just like ugh, and they just like you know they're gonna get like sick of it. And they're like, I keep thinking I'm seeing butt cracks, but I'm not. You know, like every time <laughs> I, I go really to work, excited. I'm thinking I'm seeing butt cracks. You know, and so I like hopefully it, it's just gonna be like a little temporary campaign, and then they might you know go back to more conservative means. But I think I think it's great. I think it's a great way to get the word the word out. Mm -hmm. Hank, make your point. When all else fails, use boobs or butts. <laughs> it it, it <laughs> worked, man. It got my attention. I, and I, 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 I want to jump on your uh, thing about um, people just kind of being immune to it after a while. It's, it's, I, I have a diversity complaint. Excuse me, not everyone has an ass that looks like that. Okay, where are the big asses? Where are the dark asses? This, yep. is, this is what, Chicago, right? Yeah. Where, 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 where are the light-skinned mocha chocolata asses? Okay, can we get can we get a grandma with the Forever 18 tramp stamp on there too? You know what I mean? That would be it's that not, would make more sense. It's not just white asses that get colon cancer. Lots of people get colon cancer. Yeah, a lot of people do yeah. get colon Thank cancer. You. I Thank like you. that you are asking for a little my, more diversity yes, in this case. More diverse some, more, right. some, some back hair, some crack hair. Just be real. I don't want to see any of that. I don't want to. See, but if, if we're talking about some Latino asses, there we go. Latino asses, right? Anyway, all right. So here's the question for the story. Um, this is a would you rather type uh, question. Would you rather find your fly was down all day or that your butt crack was showing? This is such a ridiculous question, but I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, who wrote this question? <laughs> Jennifer Rupert, <laughs> producer of Welcome the Welcome to your first week, Jennifer. All yes, right. Hank. I'm going to start with you, Hank. I want my penis dangling out all day. This is a ridiculous question. <laughs> this is so, I just, yeah, just, I have nothing to hide. Not Neither one of those things no. embarrasses me. Really? <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, like, well, it happened. Well, we know who's well hung up in uh, here. Well, I just have no shame. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Whether it is or isn't, I just have no shame. You know, sort of like, yeah. I've seen people, you know, you, they walk down the jet bridge with toilet paper on their shoe, and you just like, ha, 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 but it's like, that's not their fault. They didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. It was their mistake. I don't know why but. that's such a big deal. Like, I remember one time I walked out of the women's bathroom with toilet paper on my heel, people like, ah. and this woman was like, I need to tell you something. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? Did I like poop on myself? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, you have toilet paper. Anyway, yeah. Robbie, what about you? Yes. Uh, yeah, I would rather have my fly down. Like, and this is just butt cracks. Have you ever seen an attractive butt crack? No. Uh, I I've seen, a, I've seen a few. Okay, like, okay. I, I'm not, Accidental I, I, butt cracks, never, never attractive. It's usually a plumber's or something. Yeah, 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 it's usually like a little like, uh, a little uh, whatever. Yeah. Fly down, like, you know, it, you might, there's my SpongeBob underwear. Boom! Like you know something about right. me. That's interesting, right. right? You know, it's like, oh, it's adorable. Yeah. It's adorable, but the butt crack, not so much. Kind yeah, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you guys. I would rather have my fly down, right. and so you get to see what kind of underwear right. I wear, and you'll probably think it's super hot. Right. So <laughs> happens to the best of us too. Who hasn't had their fly down? Before, right. You know? Exactly. It's like, oh, okay. Happens all the time. Right. Anyway, tell us what you guys think. <laughs> what would you rather have happen to you? Comment in the section below, and we will see you soon. Megan Trainer is all about that bass. That's actually one of my favorite songs, even though there's a line in there where she talks shit about skinny women. And I'm like, there's no need for that. Anyway, uh, she is causing a splash, or a stir, I should say, with her newest music video for her song, Dear Future Husband. Some people are calling it racist. Not racist. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, people are calling it with people. such confidence too. <laughs> this is racist. <laughs> okay, force of habit. Okay, we do so many stories about race on the Young Turks that it's like in my head, sexist. Okay, that's what they're calling it. All right. So why are people calling her latest music video sexist? Well, it has like this 1950s vibe. And she's basically singing to her future husband, and she's telling him, look, you gotta treat me right, okay? You gotta buy me a ring, you gotta buy me flowers every anniversary. Here's some pictures. She talks about how she'll cook for him and how she'll treat him right. Um, and people think that the lyrics can be interpreted as very 1950s uh, gender stereotypical. So let me give you an example. 
Uh, in one verse, she says, take me on a date. I deserve it, babe. And don't forget the flowers every anniversary, because if you'll treat me right, I'll be the perfect wife. Buying groceries, buying, buying, or buy buying <laughs> what you need, okay? So I thought this was fascinating, um, and I actually went back and read all the lyrics to her song, and there's a portion of the song where she's like, look, uh, I know you work nine to five and you want me to cook for you, but I work nine to five too, so don't expect shit. She doesn't say it verbatim, but that's basically what she's implying. So it could be possible that the music video is supposed to be satire, but I'd like to hear from her what the explanation is. So what's the criticism? One Twitter user says the following, I know Megan Trainor's music is supposed to sound all 1950s, but it doesn't mean the lyrics have to be from that sexist era too. But not everyone is upset about this music video. Another person says, love the new Megan Trainor video for Dear Future Husband, to hell with the haters. What do you guys think? Robbie, make your point. I think it's um, it's a little complicated because she is jumping back to gender norms to a certain extent. But then, like, is it satire or is it not? It's obviously not so down the line that it's obviously satire. And that would mean it would be bad satire. So either way, I was kind of I was really iffy watching this. I was like, I don't know how to how to feel about this. But I mean, I mean, all of that together, I, I think it's. I mean, she's an artist, right? She gets to make whatever she wants to make. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little unfair of us to also <coughs> like overly expect her to be perfectly feminist or perfectly progressive. If she doesn't want to be, then like, then that, that's just what she wants to do. You I, know? I, I, exactly. I'm in favor of transparency. So if this is something that she believes in and she wants to be transparent about it, I think it's actually a good thing, even though I don't agree with it. Because then you can allow the market to decide. If you're not into her music, you don't have to consume her music. Hank, what do you think? Look, if she wants to bake pies, scrub floors, and blow her husband whenever she wants, more power to her. Do I, you, boo. Do you, boo. I think, I think she is, I think people are upset because they think that this is degrading to women. And I don't think it's degrading. I think she's trying to take a, a stereotype from a very specific period of, time yeah. and turn it on its head and she's empowering herself with it and yeah. you know what yeah. I like all, I like doing all these things I think it's really interesting because really just interesting. like that gold or white blue or black dress it's open for interpretation <laughs> people have different perspectives um, look the, the only thing about the song that I didn't really love is that she makes it seem as though all women want the stereotypical things out of their men so for me, I want a man who helps support my career and I want to do the same for him. I like getting flowers is nice, but I don't really care that much about flowers. I don't care that much about rings or jewelry and things like that. So I don't think that it's really representative of what the modern modern female wants from her man. Most women that I know, and this is of course based on my perspective and my bubble, want a guy who's their legitimate partner. Mm, you know, yeah. you help build one another up. So yeah. I'd like to see a song about that, okay? Now here's the question. <laughs> um, who should pay for dinner on the first date? Robbie. The person who asked that other person out. Ah. Thank you. You're taking that person to dinner, you should offer to pay for that dinner. And if the other person is like, no, 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 I'm having a great time, I want to pay my, my half, great. Then there you go, like, then you can work it out amongst yourselves. But I think whoever is taking the other person out on the date should offer to pay for the date. Because, you it. know, if it goes terribly, like, that way you're like, okay, this was, this was my idea, my bad, great, I'll pay for it, no harm done, great, yeah. you know, like. That's a good go. standard, I like that, what do you think? Exactly, same thing. And and being gay, there's always a little bit of that like, oh, how do you figure it out? How do you maneuver it? And for years, I've always subscribed to the notion, yeah, if I ask you out, I buy. If you ask me out, you buy. Mm -hmm. And for guys that have, you know, try to go splitsies or Dutch, you know, you, you almost are like, you, you get a little insulted because it's like, you asked me out, and then I, that's a strike against you. I'm probably just not going to put out as, as easily. Yeah. yeah. Like, as, I didn't know yeah. we were going to Katsu yet. Yeah. I didn't, you know, not, I'm not Katsu. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I can buy any item off the two for 20 menu as long as it's is one of these appetizers. Yeah, it's really weird. No, no. <laughs> cheap bastard. We're done. That's really funny. Yeah. Um, I, I generally agree with you guys. Um, I know that now that I'm in a relationship, we usually always go Dutch. Or... It's like a 50-50 thing. Right. If he pays, I know that the next time we have dinner, I'm going to insist on paying. And I love that. There's something really empowering about that. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. It's not one person taking care of another person. It's both of you taking care of one another. And that's a good feeling. Anyway, uh, I want to know what you guys think. Who should pay for a first date? And what is your interpretation or pers uh, perspective on the Megan Trainor video? Do you think it's sexist? 
do you think it's racist? We want to know. <laughs> so comment in the section below and we'll hear from you soon. All right, final story for you guys, and this one is a doozy. There is currently a new law being proposed in Nevada that would offer medical marijuana, medicinal marijuana, to pets. <laughs> now, there's a Democratic senator uh, in the state of Nevada that proposed this, and he says that, look, vet veterinarians would have to justify the pot usage for the pets, right? You got to make sure that they have serious illnesses that could be alleviated by pot. But uh, the drug has been proven to have medicinal value for humans, so why wouldn't it have medicinal value for pets? Now, according to uh, the state senator who has proposed this, he says, look, you don't know until you try. <laughs> and apparently there is a vet in Los Angeles by the name of Doug Kramer, who has actually done this for his Siberian Husky who had tumors removed. Apparently he was in a lot of pain, and so the dog was given medicinal pot, and then apparently he gained some weight and he lived six weeks longer. All right, here's a quote from Kramer himself. He said, I grew tired of euthanizing pets when I wasn't doing everything I could to make their lives better. I felt like I was letting them down. This is a fascinating story. I'm a huge supporter of medical marijuana, recreational marijuana, especially me recreational marijuana after a long day of work. But I want to know what you guys think. Hank, make your point. You know that dog owners are going to be prescribing this just so they can smoke it themselves. Do you, boo? They, that's Do what you, they're, boo? They're gonna... I don't mind it at all. I'm, I'm, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm like, let's let's one step at a time. Let's try to get it legalized for humans first, because I'll yeah. tell you right now, my dog, the last thing he needs is a joint. He already acts like he's high all the time anyways. He just stares at you. Yeah. He just, he not he runs into things. <laughs> he sleeps. He slobbers on random people. Like, he already, he doesn't need this. He's doing everything that we wish we could do. Pretty much. Can you imagine, too? Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine, though? going into a doctor, going to an event and being like, oh, no, um, uh, Trixie has uh, joint Gla problems. And gla right, just, and just, oh, I'm going to need 30 ounces for the next 20 <laughs> yeah. weeks. No, I, I think that if there is medicinal value for these animals and it's not going to harm them, then I'm all for it. Or Why be let... used by their owners. Right, look, I'm an animal welfare. <laughs> yes. Proponent. That's all I'm gonna say, <laughs> Robbie. Yeah, I think it, that's it's an interesting question. If it's good for the dogs, because we don't really know yet. I don't <laughs> think like there aren't any like conducive studies that this is actually helping the dogs. But I mean, like either way, I, I I'm all for it. I am all for it either yeah. way. Think of the viral videos. I know there would be some good stuff. Definitely. Think of it, the beautiful day that that will be. That's what internet people are really concerned that's about. What <laughs> okay, we want the viral video. And, and, yeah. and the welfare of the pets. And the, yeah, that's you know, that's that 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 Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, too. keep Robbie employed. He, he, <coughs> more videos on equal search. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's a personal question. Have you ever taken a mood altering substance without your knowledge, Hank? It wasn't without my knowledge, but mm -hmm. I'm just a lightweight all around, and so I don't, I can't handle my drugs. And Anna, I, I don't know if I t told you this before, I might have, like in a private, private conversation, but July 4th, I had my first, th am I going to go to jail for this? I had, no. I had, I had E, is that? Uh -huh, so, and uh -huh. MDMA, never, that was probably sure, cut with other things, but that's all right. Uh, but I tell you, I was in the corner of that pool on that roof. A friend like loaned me their baseball cap. I was literally hovering <laughs> above the water like this in mm -hmm. sunglasses up against the wall. People were, I, I, for three hours, people were coming up to me and people people were literally like, are you okay? And I literally would, would, be, would be like, listen, if you could just stay here for just a moment, that would be really good. Like strangers. And I, I would just I would just like be on top would of people. You, would literally you also, just like would that. Would you also do this to I was, I was. I was touching hair. Yeah. I was touching hair and girls, would, girls, and girls would be telling their boyfriends. Girls would be like, no, 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 it's totally cool. He's gay. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, he's, awesome. He's totally cool. That's awesome. Yeah, but I, I, would, just, I would just be on people. So you didn't enjoy it? It was, I'm not going to say I wouldn't, in, I didn't, you know what, it was weird. It was really weird. I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it again, yeah. but I did not expect that. And then afterwards, I don't smoke or drink heavily. Oh my God, beer after beer after beer after cigarette after cigarette. I was like, is that a Virginia Slim? Give it to me. Is that a Marlboro? Like, give it to me. I oh was, my like, God. I was done. I was no. so dehydrated. It's a, you probably had a, a bad, bad pill because... I'm telling you, you get the right <laughs> pill and you're like, mm, 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 It was mm, one July 4th, mm, remember. Mm, can I do July 4th with you next time? Maybe, <laughs> okay. maybe. Robbie, what do you think? Or uh, what's I've, your answer? The only, the only example of this, I think, was, uh, I was I was younger. I think I was 13. Um, and I was at a, a party, actually, with uh, my parents and some family friends. And there were those little chocolate liqueurs, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and guess who didn't know what liqueur meant? So uh -huh. I downed some of these chocolates. And after a while, I think my mom caught me and I had, like, 
four of them, which wasn't like too bad, but like it was enough where I like started to feel like really, really? like dizzy, and I was like, wait a minute. Well, thirteen. Mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was, I was like really, really, yeah. young. and I was like ninety pounds at thirteen. Like I was like a tiny dude, you know. So um, I didn't know that those things could actually get you drunk. Yeah, at thirteen I, when you're ninety pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, I think I did or Asian. Have, I did have like a substantial amount of them yeah, yeah. before anybody caught me. That's hilarious. Um, I never unwittingly took a substance that had some mood altering effect. However, I did once, uh, a friend of mine was prescribed Adderall and he asked me if I wanted to try one. And I was like, yeah. Because I had, we had done so many stories on Adderall and how it's supposed to make you so focused and like, you know, motivated and hardworking. And that's the kind of stuff I'm obsessed with. So I was like, oh, this is the magic pill. I finally have access to it. Of course I'm gonna try it. So I didn't realize how much it messes with your dopamine or it messes with some chemical in your brain that like makes you insanely happy and peppy. And so before I knew it, I was insanely happy and peppy. And I wanted to go dancing and I was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you know what? I love everyone. I love everyone. You guys are all great. You guys, everyone I work with, you guys are wonderful. And then later on I figured out it was the Adderall. I was like, what, what was that random good mood that I was in? That never happens. Anyway, uh, that was my experience. But I want to hear from your experiences. So comment in the section below and let me know if you've ever taken a mood altering substance, either with your knowledge or without your knowledge. And I want to read your comments in a video that we'll do soon. We do read your comments, we do respond to them, we do love hearing from you guys, so make sure you do it. And that does it for today's show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give you guys an opportunity to plug some of your work. Hank's like working on 28 different things. I couldn't write the <laughs> list down quick enough, so why don't you tell the audience about it? Oh, you did a great job. I mean, I just, I, I'm just gigging and just going from show to show to show and having a really great time. And I'm excited, uh, especially for Baby Daddy, because that was my first sitcom, so. Get it. I think it premieres in August or September. It's on ABC Family. Uh, and in the meantime, just stalk me on my Twitter or my Facebook. So, Very oh, nice. Instagram too, yes. And then I'm glad to be sitting next to this guy because I followed him for a while. Robbie oh, Motts. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, I'm Robbie Motts. You can find me on Equals 3 every Tuesday and Friday. Um, I also have my own YouTube channel now. It's uh, www.youtube.com slash Robbie the Motts. There was some kid who was named Robbie Motts. He got my URL, but that's okay. Oh, that's um, sucks. Just like you with your Instagram. I know. Oh. Yeah, yeah I mine know. is like Robbie.b.motts because like, ugh, you know. That sucks. Lost it, but whatever. Um, Okay, you know. You All right, well, it's do. on the record now. People know where to find you, so yeah, that's exactly. a good thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'm Anna Casper, and you guys can check me out Monday through Friday on The Young Turks from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and also on Instagram at Anna Casparian TYT, Twitter at Anna Casparian. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Special thanks to Jennifer Roofer for her very first episode of The Point. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen, guys? You're going to have an awesome week, and we'll see you next week with another episode of The Point. On the, on the British Yahoo. Yeah. Right, online, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, he's also in upcoming episodes of Rizzoli and Isles and also Baby Daddy. Yes. Baby Daddy. Sweet. Thank Anna, this is so nice. You didn't have to renovate just for me, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Only the best for you. <laughs> Please, thank we, you. We also have Robbie Motts on the show today. He's the host of Equals 3 on YouTube. And every time we have him on, uh, people freak out. So in a oh, good way. Oh, cool. In a good Great. Way. People like yeah. you, Robbie. Well, you didn't have to renovate for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All righty. Stole your joke. <laughs> so let's get started with uh, our very first topic, a 12-year-old getting arrested. A 12-year-old girl in Boulder, Colorado recently got arrested because she attempted to poison her mother on two different occasions. Now, according to reports, she initially tried to poison her by putting bleach in her smoothie to show even better than it already is. Now, what are we talking about on The Point today? Lots of fun stories, including a 12-year-old who got detained for trying to kill her own mother. You won't believe why she tried to do that. 
Also, 24 people prove what it's like to be an elderly person with a tattoo. Also, how do you raise awareness about something as uncomfortable as rectal cancer? We'll tell you what Chicago's doing about it. And also, Megan Trainer is all about that base, and according to some, all about that sexism too. We'll tell you why people are criticizing her and her latest music video. But before we get to that, you want to meet our panelists, right? And they're reoccurring panelists. They're awesome. Hank Chen, he's a comedian and actor. He's currently on Community, uh, which is online. 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 It's online. <laughs> so if you want to check it out, make sure you do. Can we get a shot? The mother apparently drank the smoothie and noticed that there was something different about it. Um, in fact, she said that she thought, well, maybe my girl or my daughter just didn't wash the cup appropriately, and there's a little bit of bleach, not a big deal. Second time, the girl actually put bleach into the pitcher of water that her mother drinks from. So what gives? Why would a 12-year-old girl try to poison her own mother? Well, it turns out that her mom tried to discipline her by taking her iPhone away, and this was her way of retaliating against her. Now, the girl is going to face, or is facing, two counts of attempted first-degree murder. So she's going to deal with some serious consequences. According to uh, police officials, she had, quote, pre-planned this a couple of different times. I want to know what you guys think about this. Welcome to The Point. I'm your host, Anna Kasparian, and we are actually broadcasting out of Studio B at TYT Network, Rebel Headquarters. What the hell is that? Well, we are currently under construction, so what you're seeing right now is not the permanent set of The Point. It's a little different, but it still looks kind of similar to how we've uh, broadcasted before. We have a great show for you guys today, and I'm really excited to announce that we have a new producer for the show, replacing David Janet. Her name is Jennifer Roofer, and she was actually one of my students at Cal State University Northridge. Oh. A star student of mine. How exciting. She got A's? She got an A. She got an A. She got okay. an A. Okay. I don't yeah. know if I'm supposed yeah. to legally disclose that information, <laughs> but nonetheless. Nepotism Hollywood people. She, yeah. She's great, and I'm really looking forward to not only working with her, but making, Robbie, let me start with you. Make your point. Wow, okay. She's 12, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Okay, a couple of things. One, um, attempted first degree murder when you're 12, like that's, that's almost like impressive. Um, <laughs> like that's like, that's like, wow, you're gonna live that's with admirable. that. Like, no. <laughs> admirable. But I mean like, you will never have to intimidate anyone ever again. I'll be like, I tried to kill my mom when I was 12. Like you will always be able to have that under your belt. But like, not, yeah, not, I'm not saying this is a good thing. Of course. But um, second thing, why do 12 year olds have iPhones? Why do they need iPhones? Yes, like, thank you. Know, you. I'm gonna thank sound like you. such an old yes. person right now, but like, yes. wh like, what do you possibly need to do as a 12 year old? Right. You need to like call your friends and make a point. No, your mom's doing that for you. So right? Hank is itching to make his point. I'm very curious. You seem to be agreeing with Robbie here. That's